uh, Heidi. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you for being on time. I really appreciate it. You came right into the space. You were able to get in without any technical issues. Um, this is probably a first for us, so that's amazing. Um, so for everybody tuning in, uh, there's, what, three or four other UFO spaces going on right now. But this is recorded for um, anyone who wants to go back and listen. Um, I've put Heidi's bio up in the nest. And um, I also put her linked, uh, link tree up in the nest. So you guys can uh, find her website and check out her books and check out her bio. Uh, Heidi is a, an experiencer. She's a researcher. She's an author. Um, her expertise is in ufology and shadow people and hat man. And I think she actually trademarked uh, both of those things because when I was seeing shadow people in hat man, I didn't even know what it was. Um, Heidi is a host of darkness becomes light on iHeartRadio and coast to coast AM. Heidi, welcome to the space. It's good to have you. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Well, the podcast is dark becomes light. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> but yeah. So people want to check it out. Uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate you inviting me to the, the, the space here to uh, have a nice conversation about all of the things that are going on in the world in regards to the conflict and alien contact and uh, the shadow people hat man phenomena that I uh, introduced to the world on uh, what these things are, um, gave their names, gave their definition, gave the um, means to get rid of them. So um I'm, I'm very happy to be here and have this conversation. And, and I want to thank you, Fringe, for being so supportive with everything, too, and all the efforts and uh, always posting and sharing, like, hello, everybody, take a look over here. I've been talking about this for a couple of decades. <laughs> so that's very cool. Well, Heidi, it's, this is very personal for me. I, um, I have been, my very first Shadow People experience was with Hatman at the age of 17, and my last one was maybe less than a week ago. And so I've been seeing these shadow people um, my whole life. And it took me until I was 54 years old to realize that these things were transporting me during abductions and that it was related to the alien phenomenon. And so when I came across your work, uh, I was just dumbfounded because I was in UFO Twitter about a year ago now. Uh, telling people in spaces, hey, just so you know, these shadow people, um, they take you to the ships. At least they've taken me to the ships. And people, you know, just laughed. Well, they laugh at a lot of things I say. And then I came across your work and realized that this was a thing. Um, you know, when I was seeing shadow people, they didn't have a name um, or anything like that. I didn't, you know, my, it was running in my family, but I didn't know other people who this had happened to. Um, so to come across your work was, was a relief for me because someone else out there was saying it and you've been saying it for a very long time. It's just that I hadn't been exposed to it. And I think a lot of people in the community have not been exposed to it. Um, if you ask someone, have you been abducted by aliens? There's not very many people are going to raise their hand, but if you ask someone, have you seen a shadow figure in your bedroom or experienced sleep paralysis, all the hands go up. And people do not understand how much these two things are related. So I love having you here. Um, we could start out. So Heidi, you had a childhood. It was uh, full of uh, paranormal stuff. And then around college age, I think you were seeing Shadow Figure um, following you down the street in broad daylight from what I remember. And then I wanted to get into your experience with your college roommate and this entity named Calf, which is how you ended up coming to name the Shadow People and Hat Man, I believe. So I'd love to just hear that story from picking up right around college with your roommate and, and let us know how this all happened. Yeah, sure. Um, so it was probably around, uh, I think it was like 1996. Uh, I got a college roommate, and uh, she was super, super religious, Pentecostal, you know, the, the types that wear the big, long skirts and never cut their hair. And uh, I had so many different types of experiences going on and in my apartment, <clears throat> and I warned her. I was like, look, I've got some strange things going on, and, and she's like, oh, don't worry, your demons won't mess with me. I have God on my side. I'm like, wow, okay, you know, I, I, it's not like I was a devil worshiper, you know, I believed in God, um, but I, I 
had stopped going to church, of course. I mean, it, what what uh, college kid goes to bed early on a Saturday night to go to church early on a Sunday morning? You know, I, I just kind of stopped. And, you know, and I did take steps away from my upbringing and my faith because, again, I'd seen so much. I'd seen angelic beings. Um, I'd, I'd had, uh, uh, as far as young as I could remember, going to this crystal city um that looks very much like ancient greek buildings and cr made of crystal and, and angelic beings walking around teaching me things um so i'd had a i had a lot of different things going on in my life uh good bad the shadow things um and uh so when this roommate moves in you know uh i at the time i'd i join a ufo group and now there's people that for the most part had all been abducted. I'd only seen craft. I didn't feel I was abducted, though I had seen some great alien beings. And uh, so that, those people, uh, my, my college roommate, I'll call her Samantha or Sam, um, she was very critical. She was just like, oh God, don't let those demonic uh, demon worshippers here in the apartment and all this stuff. So um, long story short, after all the criticism that most of my friends would say back then, you know, like, ah, aliens, whatever, you know, um, <laughs> they weren't talking about it uh, uh, to praise it, but to make fun of it and me, you know. Um, so one day she went to a different college than I did, and she was driving to um, her college in broad daylight, and something jumped on the hood of her car. She called me in a panic after she got to her school, and uh, I didn't know what she was saying she is puerto rican and had a very thick accent and i don't speak spanish <laughs> she's carrying on i'm like she said something something's in her classroom and and it's shocking her and i i just i did not know what to think and uh, i'm like he may to come pick you up you know like it didn't sound good what was happening and she's like no it feels good it, she just like paused really strangely i'm like it feels good, but something weird is in your eye. I just it couldn't make sense of it. So we decided to meet up later. And uh, I lived in Milwaukee at the time and uh, went to uh, the lakefront, and sitting there in my car, chatting about what took place. And, and she's like, Heidi, look, I was driving. This gelatinous crystal sparkly creature jumped on the hood of my car and it shoved its head through the windshield. And I'm like, whoa, how'd you, what? You know, at first I've never heard of such a thing. And I'm like, how, how on earth were you, you know, so calm, you know, how'd you drive and make it to your, your, your school? And she's like, I had a really calming effect to it. And I'm like, okay. She's like, and I just automatically like felt at ease to ask it questions. And again, like skipping some, some details because, uh, but it, it, it said something to her along the lines of, uh, it is not a mistake that you, uh, or a coincidence that you were uh, in your, your college class was teaching about the Native Americans uh, dancing until exhaustion to have visions of their star brothers and sisters. And uh, so it was, it, it was just, you know, really, really odd questioning. But the interesting part that she's describing to me that uh you know she asked this thing and it's answering her back she goes but Heidi here's the weird part you know like when you go to the dentist and your mouth gets numb she's like my mouth went numb and it started flapping up and down and answering me through my own mouth <laughs> and I'm like oh wow and you know I again this, this friend, super religious, I'm like, this, you know, she never would talk about such a thing. And in the middle of, of conversating on this, she, she suddenly goes, I need to meditate. I need to meditate. I'm like, meditate? Like, I didn't even know this is something that she did. And, uh, and she closes her eyes just for a moment. And all of a sudden, this voice comes forward and uh, with a reduced accent, and it says, Hello, I've been waiting to speak to you for a very long time. And I'm like, uh, Samantha? <laughs> you know, like, what's going on? And this voice comes back from her. Uh, oh, this is not Samantha. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, what, what, what do you mean? You know, type of thing. 
And I said, so who's speaking? You know, I'm, I'm thinking, is she pulling like the biggest joke of her life on me? You know, like it's just, but then I, I remembered her tears and, you know, we're having this conversation and, and, and I'm like, she's not pulling my leg. You know, this is, this is really happening. And I'm like, okay, Heidi, calm, calm your mind. And I'm like, I've seen this before. You know, I've seen other people who have tried to communicate or have, uh, not communicate, but have uh, um, be hypnotized or regressed to try to recall their alien uh, abduction experiences or contact experiences. And instead of them reporting on what's going on, um, the beings would speak through them, you know, like then and there, like a, a live feed, you know, it, it was, you know, just strange. And, and I'd even had um, a couple of people that I knew that, quote, channeled beings alien beings um so i'm like you know i'm asking you know well who's talking you know and uh and it said i'm i'm what you would call an alien it's like oh really you know and uh, you know some of this might be a little bit out of order but and, and i'm like uh an alien you know okay where are you it's like well i'm in a ship up high okay well can you show me your ship and uh and he says, well, no, that, that can't be done because your your governments know how to shoot us out of the sky now. And I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, then, he, then he, he offers up this, this opportunity. Oh, I, I should probably say first how he, how he said his name. I was like, well, who's speaking? And um, uh, th this uh, uh, Samantha pops in and she goes, Heidi, I'm seeing a symbol. I'm seeing a symbol. I'm like, and she said that it's a triangle with a line through it. And then she spells out that in her voice, C-A-F-T-H, calf. And I'm like, and when I pronounced it, uh, this being said, oh, I hate the way your mouths form my name. And I'm like, wow, excuse me, you know, type of thing. But uh, so he's telling me he's in a ship up high. And uh, I'm like, okay. And then he, he says, but I think I might be close enough enough to uh project an image of myself and i'm like oh really <laughs> and uh the car like filled with this hum right and i'm like what is going on here and then in the 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 seat between us formed this tiny child-sized fleshy pinkish colored being <clears throat> and i mean i was pinned up against the, the side of the, the door. I'm like, oh, okay, 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 I see you, I see you, you know. And uh, and then I was like, well, but, you know, it's kind of out of focus. And uh, it's like, well, that cannot be helped. You have weak human eyes. And I'm like, well, another another blow on us humans, you know. And I'm like, and, and then it starts to fade away. And I'm like, whew, you know, <laughs> this thing is real, you know, like, wow. Uh, you know, there's no, no doubting my own experience, my own eyes here. And he goes on to speak through my friend, uh, speaking about my mother who had passed when I was seven years old. Your mother is not your mother. Well, she is, but, um, she agreed to allow us to use her DNA to create you or something. And, and I was like, you know, this is a topic that my friend would never bring up. Because, I mean, what a painful experience in losing your mom so young. And to talk about my dead mother, like, no way. No way. You know, I'm just like, what? You know, where are we going with this conversation? You know, and um, starts talking about DNA and, and, and different things. And, and, I mean, it was just like, I... I, I just felt like uh, all eyes from the universe were looking at me. And um, uh, Samantha, you know, comes back and and she's talking to so fast. She's like a mile a minute. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. What was that? And I'm like, you tell me, what was that? It's like, I saw the creature, this being, you know. And, uh, and, and I mean, just what an explosive conversation because here she had who pooed the, the this, uh, conversation for so long about I'm going to these UFO meetings and meeting people who have experienced things like this. And, uh, 
she, you know, everything was demons to her. And it, it, almost racing back to the, the apartment, and I had several books on, on UFOs and alien contact and all this stuff. And, and she, like, started several books at the same time. And with English being a second language, she hated reading English, but she was just like, there's got to be answers here, there's got to be answers here, and, you know, she wanted to talk to uh, all the people in the UFO group all of a sudden, and I was like, calm down, breathe, you know, um, so it was, it was really, it was really a, a, an intense time, and, uh, oh gosh, there, there was, um, you know, kind of, kind of skipping some things here too, but we're, you know, we're in college, and we're just like, wow, that was, that was something else. And then we're like, yeah, do you think you could do it again? Heck yeah, let's try, you know, like, you know, woo, let's see what, you know, but it, it, interesting to note, um, her doing that really, it was really exhausting to her, like absolutely exhausting. Like she was so lethargic after, um, connecting with, with such a thing. And, um, and something I want to point out too, with, and I never really thought of this uh, until more recently, a couple of years, actually. Um, this being calf, uh, him being as small as he was and very childlike, um, though he had larger eyes uh, and the, the pinkish uh, color and everything. But I never thought of the comparison of him potentially being a, a cherub, like a, an angel. Um, and especially from conversations that we had later with this being, but, um, so again, back to, you know, us trying to, you know, like, oh my gosh, you know, you're talking to a, to an, an alien being and it showed itself, you know, and, and she expressed how she was, um, seeing what she saw when she was communicating with this, this being Kath. And she's like, Heidi, I'm, I'm on a ship. <laughs> I see controls like, and, uh we kind of swap spaces or, or something. And she said that she could remember pretty much most of what was being said, but I, I found that she really didn't um, in conversations that we had after, but, you know, cause we, we dove in to, you know, try to figure out wh what could this being tell us. And, um, you know, we're, we're having a ball with it. Like, tell me the lottery numbers, you know, tell me this, tell me that. And, I asked everything that I could think of, you know, and most of the answers came back with, it would not benefit you to know that. If I told you what planet I was from or what star system, you wouldn't know where it is. You wouldn't know where to look. It's like, it would not benefit you. And I'm like, well, what the heck? Like, what are you doing here? You know, then type of thing. I'm like, I, we're not getting anywhere. We're not getting anywhere. And I'm like, so I, I just kind of eventually got to the point of, I'll just start talking about anything. And, uh, you know, uh, Samantha would have her list of questions she'd hand me and, uh, and be like, ask this, you know, the next time or ask this, you know. And uh, so I, I had her questions. I had my own. And, and I just, uh, I never really got good answers until I started asking, uh, I, I shared, um, uh, a dream that I had that was just so real. Like it was hard to believe that it didn't happen. I call those waking dreams. Like it, it, it goes into my memory as a life experience. Um, it gets added there. And, uh, what took place in this one, I was in Florida for some reason, and uh, my dad was in a home uh, in the house that we were living in there for some reason. I, I don't live in Florida. And uh, I looked up. It was, it was daylight. And I, you could see the moon. And the moon was suddenly started getting really, really close to Earth. And I was like, why is this moon getting so big? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And, and all of a sudden, a very large ship appeared in front of the moon and started pulling it so it wouldn't hit us and but it still it got close enough where it kind of uh, popped our protective bubble if you will and and so as it soon passed us um it the it, this great winds hit us all of a sudden just i mean powerful winds houses were blowing down the street 
and I couldn't even hear my own voice uh, coming from my lips as I, you know, kind of went into the house calling for my dad, like, oh my gosh, you know, the moon tried to hit us, but a UFO steered it off course. It was just so bizarre. So I shared this dream, and it was the first time that Calf gave a meaningful answer. And he's like, I'm not in charge of dreams, but I'll tell you this. The darkness in your earth was pulling the moon towards the earth. We saw what was happening, and we moved it so it would not destroy the planet. I said, darkness in, inside of the earth? I'm like, what do, you, you know, what do you mean? He's like, well, you call them shadow people. We call them shadows. What an earth-shattering moment for myself, because I had been dealing with those things for a while, and I started calling them shadow people, uh, going to my UFO, the UFO meetings, and whoever else would listen, because I, I was tired of always having to describe these shape-shifting dark things that would uh, come around and, and taunt and harass and come in the form of spiders, especially for me, I called shadow spiders, and, uh, and to now have an alien that I've witnessed address this very strange phenomena, I was floored. I was floored. I was like, well, what? You know, and, and this began the conversation with uh, Kath on what these things were. And, and my goodness, um, so many things and so many different elements and so many different angles that applied to this time in my life to wake me up to uh, this understanding that it's all connected. And I mean, so many different things connected. Um, an alien that uh, made himself available to say at different points, you're not praying enough. I'm like, excuse me? You've stopped praying. You know, Jesus is who he said he is. And like, wow, you know, where are we going with this conversation? It's like, there is only one God, and he is the creator of all. These dark beings and what they're doing, they respond to the name of Jesus. And so do we. We take our orders from him. And I'm like, oh, hold on, are, are you telling me, <laughs> like, you guys are like angels? And, and, and spoke to me about uh, how... Um, and when people are suffering, when they're dying and whatnot, that they take the soul. There's no need for them to uh, uh, suffer needlessly. So they'll, they'll take the soul. And I'm like, well, people are suffering and twitching and dying, you know, horrible deaths. It's like, no, we take the soul. We don't allow that. Um, if they're meant to cross over, why allow them to suffer that way? So it spoke of, of things uh, essentially that were what we've been taught in our religions that angels do. And I was like, are you telling me your guys are angels? It's like, we've been called many things throughout time. And, uh, but when he went into the shadow people, wow. Um, I, I, I couldn't have ever phantomed where it would have gone because, you know, he started, uh, describing, some of the alien beings and what's the connecting element between them, especially the abusive ones. I don't know where it ever went, uh, <laughs> went wrong to say that there are not abusive aliens. Uh, I sat in these UFO groups for a long time and I had my own for 15 years and it was connected. Uh, I created a, a website when most people didn't have a website and it was always voted in the top 10 UFO websites in the world, you know. Uh, and uh, the conversation was real. It was like, look, <laughs> aliens are here and they, some are pretty awful. And uh, I, But um, one of the, the striking things that I started to see, you know, I, I, I listened to people who spoke of aliens coming in, molesting them molesting their children, dragging them through the wall or window, and them sleeping with n guns and knives under their beds and pillows, just like, I'm ready for these, you know, 
things next time. I'm, I'm going to murder them. I'm going to kill them. And, and I watch these people become more docile, uh, more accepting, and almost like, um, almost like a, a, a program, programming of, guess what, guys? I'm special. I was chosen for this. You know what? I agree to this. You know what? They're my family. I was like, hold on. You in particular had a rightful under your bed. I said this in one of the meetings. This guy was so irate, pacing, red face, screaming, cursing, almost throwing stuff in the meeting. Uh, that was held, by the way. Um, that, that one was not my UFO group. That was run uh, by this therapist. It was a hypnotist who found all of these people with PTSD were coming to her, to her, she'd regress them, and here aliens were abusing, raping, molesting, you know, all sorts of horrible things, and she formed a group. So these people were really suffering. And then they became docile, and I called them out on it. I was like, oh, hold on. And again, I'm the person in the room that had not been abducted. I'd seen UFOs large ones that would respond to me and come when I called them um, on some occasions. So just, that's another story. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm like, what, what is going on? Well, I, I just feel like this is what's, what's going on. And I'm like, are they still raping you? <laughs> you know? Yes. Uh, oh, how, how is that okay now? I, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand it. And and then um, it's like, well, after they raped me, they taught me their language. Oh, oh. I said, so if Uncle Molester abuses you and gives you a cookie afterwards, it's okay? It makes it go away? I I could not get it. I couldn't get it. I, I just wanted to be real about it. And it was almost like a glossy-eyed... Uh, thing that was going on. I, I couldn't get it. Um, but these people became my friends and I'm like, you know, whatever it takes for you to get over the stress of what you're experiencing, who am I to poo poo what's working for you? Because so much was, was going wrong in their lives because of this. Um, so I, I didn't want to, uh, destroy, Oh, you guys are wrong. You're nuts. You know, but I kept it real for myself and recognizing the shift. And uh, some of the people in the group realized that, uh, okay, th th this, is, this brings calf back into the conversation because I couldn't get it. Um, some of the people, when they'd be regressed, uh, because they were still working with that therapist, they're like, oh, I agreed for this to be happening to me. I, I agreed. This this is why they're family. I, I know them, and uh, I was like, you know them, and you agree to this abuse that has ripped your life apart. Where you sought out a therapist, and it's the same thing is happening to your family. I couldn't understand this. So, I'm speaking to Calf about this element, he said, "Yes, these uh." Some of them are connected to these uh, more negative types of beings. And I'm like, okay, so how does that work? And uh, essentially said that their previous lifetime might have been with these beings. And they agreed to be born into this lifetime. Just like myself, they pointed to me, like, you agreed to be born here. And I, and I do remember that without hypnosis. I have not been successfully hypnotized um and uh and so they agree to be born here to work from the inside out to change the conversation on what's going on with alien abductions alien contact uh all sorts of things anything that uh could essentially guide the the, the conversations um the research and and I mean, some of these people were definitely getting their feet wet and speaking at conferences and, and whatnot. And uh, it said, uh, Calf told me that 
the uh the i said but the level of abuse that they were taking was so horrific why would they agree to this it's like th they said they spare no one not even their own kind heidi they don't spare even their own kind so whatever it takes to get their goals met they did um so when you wonder and to watch this this change in uh conversations and and also um some of the people in the in the meetings were uh recalling <laughs> this, is, this is so horrible when other people were being abducted from their bedrooms and abused and screaming being pinned down and operated on and raped and whatever it was these people who became docile in my group became uh, the ones who would approach the humans the new humans being abducted and calm them down and say it's okay you know i'm okay so it's like to have a human face there and it, so they became assistants and, and and the cycle continued so the panicked one while i sleep with a gun under their bed became an assistant after they got glossy eyed and you know this is all good and well but um it's a it's a shame and um I, I I'm really surprised uh fringe when you shared how people would say everything's love and light I was like it is when, when did that happen fully you know I saw the beginnings of it and the transition of course and I had the UFO group for 15 years myself so a very active in in the field um but to to see this 100% love and light like nobody dare speak of it being negative that's that was surprising to me um that conversation definitely it, you know i was careful not to shame people for what they believe to be true for themselves but one thing uh i've always stuck to my guns on is any being who has even once abused you i don't care what they taught you later i don't care how they let you fly the ship which has been uh, a, a key thing for <laughs> some some abductees they're not good if they came in one time to abuse you it, it's they're not good and one thing to note is uh they can make themselves appear as the good guys as well so if you had a group of uh, positive beings come to you and then the negative ones come to you looking just like those positive ones and so you let your guard down well they have access to you it's a uh, it's vicious but um you know getting back to the shadow people the connecting factor between the negative alien beings that's uh some of the praying mantis the grays the reptilians and whatever else might be attacking and, and abusing a person are the shadow beings the shadow people they are essentially conquered possessed we're dealing with possessed aliens it, it sounds ridiculous right but i was told that um there is a, a light source and there is a dark source there these shadows have crossed over and onto different planets and essentially turned brother against brother and possessed them pulled their strings to do their dirty work where they didn't have to um, conquer uh like you know with with uh you know guns drawn or, or a blaze or something so um this 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 whole you know like gee the reptilians got their own agenda and the grays do too but i don't feel real warm and fuzzy inside about it what is it well the shadow people are the connecting factor um and you know when i first uh oh gosh there is so much to say but when it comes to um these uh these shadow beings you know i i categorized and named the different forms that they came in and i had not seen the hat man myself my uh, roommate did samantha and i assumed it was another form that shadow people took but um to go into a little bit detail what happened with that one was really 
bizarre. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night hearing a, a death scream I have never heard before out of a human before or since. I was sure Samantha was being murdered next door in, in her room. I bolted from my bed, ran to her, like, flipped the lights on. And I mean, I, I have never seen a human being try to make themselves as small, oh, I get chills, as small as they possibly can into a corner of a room, shaking violently. And I was like, Samantha, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You know, and, and she's just, <laughs> you know, just couldn't even speak, you know, and, and pointing, pointing, and finally gets out the words, the man, the man, the man, the man. And I'm like, oh, no. She, her, she had a, a, a door to the front porch in her room. And I'm like, somebody broke in, you know. I'm looking around. I'm like, hold it. The door's locked. The window's locked. I'm like, I don't see anybody. Where'd he go, you know? And she's like, you know, with, she finally calmed herself a little bit to, to speak. She's like, he disappeared when you opened the door. And I'm like, what? And she drew the hat man image that has been uh, copywritten but ripped off all over the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> just uh, of, of a man in a three-piece suit with a, a, a chained watch on his hip, uh, the flat gaucho hat, goatee and uh, solid black eyes and myself because of the horror the feel of what this thing was and how it was able to disappear I assumed it was another form that shadow people could take and I called him the hat man shadow and um, that thing I wish I had known better than this thing was not to be in that category. But when I introduced the shadow people topic to the world, I, uh, I essentially, um, you know, tagged it as hat man shadow. And to this day, everybody just groups them in. Oh, the shadow people, you know, hat man. I'm like, Oh no, he is not. I've corrected it. You know, a few years after I put the word out there about him, but it's too late. It's still hanging and still pondering, uh, <laughs> to say, you know, he's a shadow being, but he is beyond that. Um, and to give a little taste of him. So when I was putting the images on my website of what shadow people look like, you know, I, I had introduced all these subjects that nobody had ever heard of before. I mean, to take the time to do all of that was, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot. And uh, so I put this on my website, some of the shadow people. And, you know, as Samantha's drawing them and putting them together. And uh, I posted the hat man. And, uh, you know, I was answering a lot of emails uh, for people that experienced alien abductions and what to do in the case of and how to get rid of them and stop them from taking people and raping them. And, uh, you know, just demoralizing them and uh, the, the horrible surgeries, taking their fetuses from their bodies, just horrible stuff. That still goes on. Um, and uh, I put the image of shadow people up and like almost instantly 80% of my emails were about those. And I, I eventually put up hat man and like 90% hat man pretty quickly as well. So I'm like, Boom, you know, I, I, the UFO crazy alien lady became, oh, you're the paranormal queen of shadow people, hat man. I'm like, 15 years and aliens, all of a sudden, somehow I'm a, I'm a demon hunter? Uh, <laughs> they're all connected. I, I've always said that, you know. Um, it, it's, it's been a weird, very weird ride. Um, people try to make sense of things and uh, throwing, uh, not asking me directly you know what is this uh, people grabbing it taking it defining it as something else and docile and you know it's like they forget uh the many years that went into putting this out there and and there was no you know people are like uh, oh you're a researcher of i i am the originator of it because <laughs> there was nothing to research there was nothing out there 
So it is absolutely untouched, uh, brand new information that I had to create and place out there and, and how that was done. Um, but, but to finish the story about, about Hatman, when I, I put the image of, up of Hatman and the next day, one of my sisters pops over unannounced and rarely had she ever done that. And she's like, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I'm like, and I'm just like, oh, hey, girl, what's going on? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm pulling up my computer. I was like, oh, I want to show you my, my website. I redesign it and I put some new images up. And I spin my my computer around and she screams, oh, that's him. That's him. I'm like, what? what? What's, what's going on? Literally the day before when I posted Hat Man, he was that angry and that specific towards me that he went after my sister right then. So he's just a shadow being? No. He listens. He hears you. He watches. Um, that gave me a straight up warning that he can't get at me, so he'll go after the people that I know and love. And I don't care if it's coworkers, <laughs> you know, um, or somebody that's taken the time to help me with something. So, and that's a whole other story. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it, he's very, very personal. Um, he is not something to be taken lightly. He's not something to be joked with, to be revered. Um, I, I've been more than disgusted with the, the, the stuff that has gone on in regards to taking these, these subjects and twisting them to say he's a guardian angel even <laughs> but um but again so backing up a little bit i'm with calf you know he got really real uh with us and and talking about what was going on with these beings and um during that time i was having recollections of agreeing to do certain things i, I said i'd had memories since uh, I was a small kid going to this crystal city that looked like ancient Greek buildings made of a crystal and people in white robes walking around and, and uh, knowing this place. And uh, to have Kath essentially say, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I helped to train you. And I'm like, what? What do you, you know, it, it was just, it was kind of foreign, but then it wasn't, you know, um, it was familiar, but I didn't know how to place it. I didn't know how to place it. But then um, one day I was uh, talking to Samantha, sitting on the living room futon, having a chat. And I'm like, I'm going to go use the restroom, you know, and I got to walk across. It just took a few steps and all of a sudden I'm not there anymore. And I, I can't remember this ever happening before or since like that, um, in mid walk. And I am looking at a scene in space. I am in the middle of space and I know it. I'm no longer in my living room. And, uh, I see a spinning sun. And I also see to the left of it, uh, a red spinning light. The spinning sun, I knew it was called the source. I hear psychics of whatever speak of source, right? I don't know what that is. I, I know the source. Um, and this light next to it, I knew it was uh, something I personally called the library of knowledge. People have different names for it. I don't know. Um, all I know is what I felt it was and knew it to be. And uh, so the this, this spinning sun spun clockwise. Um, if you're looking at it from here, <laughs> it sounds strange to say, but it's, and uh, in, in this light were trillions upon trillions of, of small lights in it. And uh, each light was a soul. And it was such a, a perfect love soup, I call it. Just a love soup, just perfect love. And, Thoughts, ideas, um, 
would flow through it clockwise and every every light would contribute to the thought as it went by and then it would go to the center of the light and become one and uh this lot that this this thought came by of something that needed to be done here and i remember kind of casually <laughs> thinking eh, i guess that's something i could do and it was almost as if everybody took a step back and said, well, she said she'd do it. You know, I'm like, well, hold on, hold on here. What's, what do you mean? You know, and, and all of a sudden I am being pulled like through cold, very cold space. I could feel it hitting my soul. And it was like my heart was being ripped out as I'm being swept out of this love soup of light. And, and if I could like dig my fingers into the universe and, and say, I take it back. I don't want to go. I would have. <laughs> it was so painful. And I got sent through this 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 barrier almost. Um, and I went to go get trained on other planets, but most especially that crystal city. And uh, so imagine I'm still standing in my living room and I get back to my body and I'm like, oh, how could I forget? How could I forget? How could I forget? How could I forget? And I go to sit down on my futon and Sam is sitting there going, what the heck? Forget what? To use the bathroom? You didn't go. <laughs> I'm like, and I looked at her. I'm like, how could I forget who I am and why I came here? And I just remember kind of looking through her like, what am I doing here? And I'm looking, I'm like, trying to figure out who I am right now. And I'm like, I'm a student to trying to become a therapist. And I was like standing up to go call my, my college to drop out. That's not what I'm here for. And, sh and, and I'm like, what? I'm, I'm, I, there's no time. I have to get ready. I have to keep going. And she's like, slow your roll. Heidi. <laughs> what is, you know, what is going on? And I remembered everything agreeing to come here during this time to warn people about the threat that was coming shadow people and hat man so um to say i've been like a dog with a bone ever since where nothing else matters is really uh an understatement i i am so driven and pretty much like started uh i started my own group from that moment pretty much forward and uh trying to do everything that i could to point people in the direction to understand what was happening however i was stifled a bit because calf told us we weren't allowed to take notes we weren't allowed to record him we weren't uh allowed to speak of what he was telling us and it was killing me inside. I was like, why? And he said, because this information might die with you. And, uh, you know, this being a shown itself, <laughs> I was like, this thing's real. I know what's going on here. I just got my memories back. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to stay true to that. But uh, I'm like, well, what are we supposed to do with this? And he said, uh, well, your book will turn out nicely. I'm like, oh, oh, funny. I am busy. I'm working several jobs. I'm full-time in school to become a therapist in one of the toughest programs. I'm like, are you kidding me? I am not writing a book. It's like, well, okay. You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. But then that notion grew in me and I turned out a book in two months while I was that busy with everything that I was doing. And it's my biggest book ever since. And uh, it's called The Secret War, The Heavens Speak of the Battle. Um, that uh, <laughs> took me, you know, I was sending that book around trying to get a publisher. Back then, the only people that would publish books like that, talking about the conflict and alien contact and the demonic, like, force of, of a being that was here, um, <laughs> it, it was only other authors who wrote in that space and other like, um, radio show hosts and whatnot. So 
I sent that manuscript all over the place trying to get it published. So uh, I've had people say, but Heidi, you know, somebody spoke about shadow people before you did. I'm like, probably because they have that book. I said, want to see the copyright? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it was, I was trying so hard. David Icke almost published it. Um, you know, he had that book too. So, but, um, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, a uh, uh, four long years. I hear I wrote it in two months, four years before I could get it published, wrote, wrote it in 97. And I'm like, come on, you know, people say they publish it, then they back out. And after they read it, oh, the public, you know, I'm like, this is not okay. And then I found a way um, to self-publish, which was new back then. And uh, started talking about it as fast and as much as I could because I had been holding it for so long, you know. Um, and, you know, I graduated as a therapist, but again, nothing else mattered. So I didn't practice as a therapist for years. Instead, I bought a cheap van, piled as many friends as I could into it, and would pay for a table at a conference that I was not invited to all over the country. And only get to speak about my book and my work and what was happening, what was coming this way, was when it was open mic time. So I was working at a bakery instead of being a therapist. So I had the freedom and the time making pennies <laughs> compared to what I could have made as a therapist because it doesn't matter as a therapist, you know. Um, and I'm like, I was on a mission. And then I got the opportunity uh, to speak on coast to coast and the rest is history because I've been a regular ever since. And then even getting my own podcast, dark becomes light, um, essentially taking people's stories and, and stuff on this. But you know, what was really strange, like, so you've, you, you put your so many years and copyright it and so many things that went into this, uh, making sure the conversation was on point. I would never think somebody would go and grab it and say, thank you. And, you know, suddenly there's a show talking about my stuff, but they didn't call me. There's an article, but they didn't call me. There's a film. They didn't call me. I'm like, you know, this is, you know, copywritten. So that's why I trademarked it. Because when I started hearing that, um, literally cults forming <laughs> around this, I trademarked it to try to, control the evil surrounding it which it is um because you know the name heidi hollis sounds real fluffy right like <laughs> it doesn't sound like this lady discovered two demonic entities nope you know what i think it sounds better coming from a guy <laughs> and that's what i would get from uh television people that would reach out to me wow you know so much about this yeah, did you hear me? I, I am the one that started this. Yeah, but we can't have a woman lead on this. Uh, can you teach a guy everything you know? I'm like, uh, no, I cannot because I actually did this. And, and then, you know, or I'd get on the show. I'll never forget this one uh, where they asked me, so how many of these things have you investigated? How many stories have you collected? I'm like, thousands. And they, they dubbed me on the show saying, Miss Hollis has investigated dozens and dozens. <laughs> I was like on a Friday. <laughs> I was like, Heidi. Um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, first of all, well, Tiff, you had a question. But what year was this, Heidi, when you were running into this kind of stuff um, in ufology? Uh, I can't even imagine what it was like back then. But what year was this uh, about? Yeah, sorry. I know I was trying to get the whole thing out there, so you guys could just ask you know. away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when uh, the the conflict where uh, people were, uh, oh, you're talking about the people that were being terrorized by their alien and no i'm talking about when you were running into problems um you know with uh, hosts and stuff like that uh with with hosts um with hosts asking you you know to have a teach a man what you know what year was that? oh what are you talking about i just got that last week <laughs> I, it's oh been dear going on, it's <laughs> okay been going on for years for years i i, I mean it's crazy that these television shows do not want a woman, not just that I'm a black woman, a woman <laughs> speaking to these things with confidence and clarity. No, they do not. They don't, they, they, they don't think that it's something that would, uh, 
<laughs> would would bode well for some reason. However, it, it's for all the the listenership for paranormal shows, uh, radio and podcasts. Guess what? Mostly women listening. So where are they getting their numbers and ideas? Who the heck knows? But it's been really, uh, really dismaying, you know, and, and it's like a, a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this, but there's going to be a, a change with um, the conversation soon for myself because, uh, and I, I think I mentioned it last uh, space that we had, Fringe, that um, I'm working on something that absolutely blows everything that I've ever spoke of out of the water. And, you know, to say that in, in the face of two paranormal phenomena being discovered, uh, or it's not even paranormal, it's, it's, a, it's, it's all, it's, it's everything. It doesn't fit into the paranormal or ufology fully because it connects the two. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a topic, um, that I hope to speak to very soon, um, as I gather, gather some help, I guess you could say. Um, and is that something that you can talk about today? Not, no, I, I can't, not, not in details because it's, uh, it's, it's touchy. It's very touchy. And, um, uh, safety is a, is a, is a part of it as well. Um. But yeah, I mean, there's a time and a, a space for it. <laughs> so <laughs> that needs another space. <laughs> but all right, well, well, we'll look forward to yeah. that. Um, so I have a few questions. I'm yeah. not sure if Tiff and Ulrich might have some questions, but I do want to get to any audience questions um, pretty early on in the evening. So if there's anyone out there who's had a hat man or shadow experience, or if you want to ask Heidi a question, please come on up and request uh, to speak. And uh, Tiff, do you had your hand raised for a second? Uh, yeah, when the, you were sharing earlier, Holly, you had stated that uh, if the you know in the in the event of this death happening, that they take the soul, so it doesn't have to suffer along with the physical body. Um, do you think it's possible that like NDEs almost open a spiritual portal, uh, and in that case, uh, could they? insert souls into a body uh, once it returns out of that, from the near-death experience. But most importantly, just do you think the near-death experience opens up a portal to uh, the spiritual world? Do I think that the near-death... Yes, it, 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 it does, definitely. Um, it, it, it allows you the chance to bring back and remember... Uh, what it is to be in between because we've been there before, but we're washed clean of that memory. Um, so yeah, it, it is, it is definitely um, an aspect. And in fact, Oh gosh, I can't recall the practice of it, but apparently uh, there was uh, evidence found in ancient Egypt that um, different practitioners would poison themselves to death to cross over to the other side. And, uh, hopefully make it back so they could say what they'd seen and also have the gift of, of you know, being a seer. Um, so it, I think this awareness has been uh, known throughout our history, <laughs> to be honest. But I'm sorry, what was your other question? Uh, the first one? Tiff, was that it? Did you have something before? Or two questions, Tiff? I apologize. Uh, I was maybe. commuting with my hands full. Um, yeah, no, no, no. My question was if, if in effect you believe that it may open a portal, which I have been, you know, thinking about lately. Um, and the other part of it was in that instance, uh, could they insert souls into a body upon return from near death, maybe negative entities or, uh, you know, uh, spirits requiring or needing salvation. And so it's just like a hitchhiker. Oh, walk-ins is what it was called back then. Now they're saying hitchhikers, but yeah, uh, well, walk uh, hitchhikers are more negative, but walk-ins are, um, uh, I've known a couple of people that claim to be walk-ins. Um, one guy who fell out of a tree and he knew, uh, he could, oh, and he, he spoke Spanish <laughs> before and he, he, you know, woke up only speaking English or, or vice versa. It's just like, he knew he was a reptilian, uh, and you know, prior. And, uh, so it was just strange, but, um, but yeah, so I think that, um, 
almost like a possession type of thing happens. And, and, and speaking on, uh, you know, if you could think of anything, having a soul, I, there's the, the opportunity for possession to happen at any point, you know, so aliens, animals, um, you know, us <laughs> absolutely can happen. 